website right now. I need to submit a request to the manufacturer to see if they are even still available. So if you want, I can take your name and phone number and I can submit the request. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Very good. Thank you. I don't think they even exist right now, so... Alrighty, well the day has finally come. We're gonna start tearing into the brakes on this thing. We'll get the brake uh, calipers replaced. We'll most likely be doing all the brake components, the calipers, the rotors, and the brake pads all in one. We'll also turn to the back a little bit just to see where they're at, if they need to be replaced. That was when I do my auto parts uh, store run. I can go ahead and just get everything that I'll need. But for now, let's go ahead and tear it into it. Damn chico. What are you doing? That's a bad nut. That's yeah, been stripped. Tires are pretty bad shape. So remember how we were saying that the four wheel drive was locked in, locked in? Well, that's the front drive line. And it's freely spinning. And that goes directly to the transfer case, which means we are not locked in four-wheel drive. Which raises both my brothers and I suspicions that perhaps it was never locked in four-wheel drive. It may have been just the caliper had an issue. We got a our CV joint boot. It's come apart. So it's gonna be throwing grease. So might be looking at doing that. It's a little guy. It ain't that big. Looks like there's some little pins here. Boy, these need some need to be soaked in WD-40 or something. Whoa! Do not lose those. Goodness, what am I doing wrong? Maybe the sliders come out first? Shit. Oh. Pfft. Sliders. So we just have to get this up. Oh, there we go. And over. A. Hey, I completely messed that pin up. Let's see if we can get this knocked back up.
And there you go. It's as easy as that. Those brakes have actually got a lot of life left in them. I don't even know whether you guys can see that on there. Those pads are still very thick. This is worn out. I'm thinking we'll just replace the caliper because those brakes are brand new. They really are. I don't see any reason to replace these. They're not cracking. They're still extremely thick. This is worn down. It's probably been reused at least once or twice. But I don't see any reason to take that off of there. I mean, there's a little bit of work, so you got to remove all this. That's why I removed these nuts initially, because I thought, well, we're going to have to take all this off of here to get to the, the rotor. But in all reality, I think we're just going to reuse this. We're just going to grab ourselves a caliper from the store and see what we can do. All right, well, before we get running off to the auto parts store, let's go ahead and take off the uh, rear tire. We'll get the brakes on here and just see how bad they are. turn my air compressor back on. Lots of brake dust. All right, well, other than lots of brake dust, I don't see any signs of leaking. Hardware looks pretty good. The pads have a decent amount of wear still left on there. On the drum, I don't feel any grooves in there. It's got a little bit of heat checking in there. Probably, honestly, that's just rust just made across the air. There's no bluing. Nothing like that, no crack, no cracks at all. Which is usually what I'm looking for is cracks that extend a good way, good ways across the brake surface. And the pads look good to me. I don't see any problem at all with these brakes. So I'm gonna say we'll leave them. I'll get my vacuum over here and probably suck up some of this dust or at least blow it off. You wanna go to the store? Okay. You got to be calm though. Are you gonna be good? Are you gonna be good? Okay. But you have to be nice. It will be good. Okay. Then let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Good ball. Good boy. Alright, well, first out of the parts store that we go to, uh, Het would have to special order them. They didn't even have them in stock anywhere, so. On to the next part store. Hi, I am working on an 84 uh, Dodge D50. I'm looking for the front calipers. Uh, front calipers for that, I would need to order the two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive? Four-wheel drive. Uh, so it looks like right now I need to submit a request to the manufacturer to see if they are even still available. So if you want, I can take your name and phone number and I can submit the request. But I'll be waiting to hear back from the manufacturer to see what availability looks like. Okay, all right. Thank you. Bye. Very good. Thank you. I don't think they even exist right now, so let's try one more place. I list, I list part numbers, but there's no availability on them. Okay, can you look up uh, under 84 Mitsubishi Mighty Max? Uh, 
Okay, so there's nothing available. Looks like there is one of each at Cargo, direct from the manufacturer, about 110 a piece. If you change, $22 over on each, there would be $33 in freight to get them here. Alright, thank you. Yep. Yep, bye. We got a new, um, I don't know what these are called, the retention clips, springs, or whatever, <laughs> since I kind of messed up that one. New sliders. Ooh, sticky. I don't even remember taking these things off. Well, that's all I needed. Now I've got an extra one of these. Cool. Okay. Yes, this is the correct one. Now, something just to notice for everybody, if you are ordering these or you're trying to find them online, if you get the two-wheel drive edition, this port actually comes straight off of here, but this port is gonna face different directions. If you have four-wheel drive, the port looks like it goes this way, and if you have two-wheel drive, it comes straight off of here. Alrighty, well, it's time to get this thing back together. Sorry about the, the contrast is all really messed up. I'm trying to get this in focus, so if it looks really shitty, sorry about that. This goes on. No, wait a minute. We need the brake pads. Nuts. I don't remember which side was which. This side, okay. Easy way to tell. Cylinder. That's the flat, so this one this one was pressed up against here. You need to remember that kind of stuff. If you ever do like semi-truck brakes, uh, you want to remember that. If you have to reuse your brakes, what's the upper and lower one? Oh, all those metal pieces that were in this bag was these. All right, just so a quick close up. That's the clip on the back, clip on there. Then there's the rotors that I know everyone's gonna be screaming out in the comments, you should replace those, but then you replace them on yours. I'm reusing them. But for now, these will work. I mean, I've seen a lot worse, but they'll work for now. Uh, cylinder sign. Clamp that bad boy in there. Maybe. Alright, got that one in. Oh, I said I put those bolts back in. Where did I put those bolts for the... They're still in there. <laughs> I was like, shit, I don't remember what I did with the caliper bolts. Alrighty. Brake pads back in there. I'm going to go ahead and re-secure our uh, whatever the, the holder for your uh, brake caliper. Now, in all reality, I should be putting Loctite on those components. Blue Loctite. I don't remember what green. If green is less green Loctite than the blue. I've always used blue. But just if you have it or lying around and you don't regularly do maintenance, especially if like you're selling something to somebody else, you're going to want to go ahead and do it properly. One of the reasons why I'm not actually going into depth like with, you know, replacing the road or stuff like that is because I'm actually kind of planning on keeping it. So if I'm going to keep it anyway, I know what's going on and I'm not as afraid about selling it to someone else who has no idea what's going on and then they end up with a catastrophe because... It wasn't done right but this is my own vehicle i'm doing things that i feel comfortable with doing because i know that i can come back into here do it properly and i'm aware of the issue question how did i get this so there's two little holes down here you're basically aiming to get those in there how i have no idea don't ask me i don't know what i'm doing
Oh, that worked actually really well. So the tool I just used to do that, if it's in focus, is these. These are like needle nose with the little, uh, I don't know what you call that, like an O one on the end. These come in really handy. These ones are Pittsburgh, uh, very handy in a pinch because I didn't know what I was doing at the beginning. So probably have to go grab a new one for this side. Same exact thing, except for not all tweaked. And the question is, is am I gonna be able to actually get it in there? I thought it'd be easier to do the top so I can see it better, but evidently not. There we go. That goes in there like that, I believe? Something like that. Was it like that? I think it was like that. Yeah. And then I put this in there. Okay, all the pins are in. Now I'll we'll hook up the brake lines and uh, see if this thing doesn't lock up anymore. All right, we're putting on the brake line. Trying. Uh oh, the GoPro died. So now I'm just putting on the last two bolts that hold on this bracket for the brake caliper. Well, that holds the brake line. Clean brake fluid. Eh, kind of dirty. I'll eventually do a full flush. I just trying to get the brakes working right now. Oh. All right, down. There we go. Pull down. Up. Back up. Down. Give me one second. All right, so in this one, do the quarter, half, three quarter, full down, slowly. Okay. So I can cut it off midway. All right, down. Okay, one quarter. Half. Ah. Three quarters. All right, go ahead and pump them. Three pumps. Okay, look at that. And it's not seized up. Go ahead and apply. And then release. Nice. Alrighty. We'll do a full pleat drain and put new brake fluid and everything later. But for now, that gets it working. So while looking for the mount for the car for putting my camera up on the windshield, uh, didn't find that, but I found my GoPro mount for my head, my headband mount. So now I've got that after doing all of the, that recording of the close-ups by hand. Turning on the first AC, turning on max AC. Alrighty, well, we got the brakes done, calipers replaced. Uh, we're gonna head over to uh, the guy's place that has the manual for this that we got online. So do a little bit of testing out, top off the fuel and see how it goes. Hopefully we can make it back. We got a dash cam. <laughs> Gotta get that RPM up whenever you take the corner. Otherwise, it really bogs it down. That and having a little bit of speed helps as well. So, I think we've got some electrical issues going on inside the dash because none of our instruments are working except for our speedometer, which I believe is cable driven, so that doesn't need any electronics to work. It's always gonna work. So, because sometimes my tack works and sometimes it doesn't. So right now it's not working, none of the gauges are working. So we've got some issues there to work on. Camera down. Alrighty, well we got the manual. We're all set, has a lot of 
good pictures and the diagrams so we can figure out all the problems that will eventually be coming in too as we repair all the electrical stuff that's not working in this thing. I've also picked up a few cool antiques. I got a Coleman stove, I got a box of some tools, and I got a gas can as well. So, collecting some more stuff. Can't help myself whenever I go to a garage sale and get some cheap stuff. Feels good. We got the truck running, it's driving. Feels good. We got the manual fork, we start looking through stuff. I'm feeling pretty good today, which means something bad's about to happen, probably. <laughs> it's never good. And that Coleman stove is rattling like crazy now, driving me up the walls. about wrap it up for today we got the caliper installed I know everyone's gonna complain about the brakes and oh you shouldn't reuse the rotors or the brake pad whatever it's running for now that's the whole idea is I just simply got it running to where we could actually drive this thing around we drove it today to go get the manual for it filled it up drove around a little bit everything seemed to be working well things that I know that are working right now it didn't lock off while we were driving that was the main thing I was looking for that we actually fixed the problem that it had it did have a slight bit of drag so I could tell when I was coming to a stop it didn't freely move it does roll back a little bit when you're on a slight incline but I could still tell there was a slight bit of drag on the brake so I'll still be keeping an eye on it but for the most part it does run and drive now we have to get the headlights working so we can drive at night and well there's a few other electrical issues the entire dash panel isn't really lighting up. It's not working. None of the gauges work. It did initially when we bought it. Uh, some of the lights were working. And then as time went on, it went on and off. And then all of today, I couldn't get any of them to come back on. So we've got some issues going on in there. Underneath the hood, there were some wires that had been chewed on. Maybe that's the whole thing. A lot of the uh, cluster and some of the other gauges run off of a common ground. I haven't found it yet. But there's a common ground that they all go to, so maybe that ground's simply bad or it's just simply non-existent. So, but that's going to be in the next video that will be coming up. We're going to just start diving into all the electrical issues. The speakers basically don't work. They're completely fried. You can hear them crackling, but nothing's coming through. We'll get some new speakers for it. Hopefully the radio still works. It's kind of, I like the kind of the old style. I don't want to put it in a brand new radio. That and it looks like it kind of fits. It'd be hard to get a good replacement that would blend with it real well. We could get a new deck, but hopefully we can keep that one going. Just get the speakers replaced. Uh, still not sure yet on paint job, what we'll be doing with that. We still got to attack that rust problem that we've got going on. That's going to be a lot of welding. I haven't done a whole lot of that. Most of my stuff is heavier. Uh, so we do have the stuff here to do it. It's just a matter of actually getting down there and cutting it out, forming the new pieces, and doing it. That's going to be quite an in-depth process. We'll be definitely be attacking the rust before we look at a paint job, though, because I want everything to be at least... If we're going to that extent on this thing, then I'm going to be going into detail with the rust and all that stuff. As far as other mechanical issues, so far not a lot. It does smell quite a bit when we're running it. Uh, I did put in 10 gallons today, topped off the tank when we were in town, so that might clear it up a little bit just because it had such old fuel in there so maybe the old diesel just simply was causing it to burn a little bit more rich I don't know but we'll keep an eye on it uh, when you eye it, once it gets warm it's pretty much good so maybe it's just the rings are needing to get warmed up and seat right uh, but for the most part 
I don't hear any loud ticking or metallic sounds right now, so it should be good for now. Main thing we're going to be focusing on now is just getting all the electrical stuff working and all that. So that will be the next video on this truck. Uh, also be trying to work on the upholstery. I got to order a lot of material to do that. I have the foam to do it. I do not have the uh, material that we would be putting in the seat. I thought about putting bucket seats in, uh, but I think I kind of want to keep the bench seat. Um, I did see a couple of these online that had those seats in there. They're probably more comfortable. Not entirely sure what we'll do there. I'm thinking I might reupholster this just to try and keep it as original as possible, but we might end up just doing bucket seat. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Thank you all for commenting in the, in the first video with the rescue and all that and then the second one. Uh, I really do appreciate it. I try to keep up to date with that. Thank you all for subscribing, the likes. It's all really helping out the channel grow really quickly, a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. Well, I'll try and keep up with the content. I'm trying to do a video every week. Next weekend, a little spoiler here. We're going to be going over my three wheeler. We're going to be doing, we're going to be replacing the pull start on it. And then inadvertently, when I was doing that, I found out that my intake manifold was cracked. So tearing into that and just kind of doing a little bit of that. That is mainly what this channel is going to be. It's going to be a lot of my little projects that I've got running around, doing rescues when I have them, fixing up things that are broken and all that. So you're going to be seeing a little bit of everything with this channel. I'm not going to be dedicated solely to really one project necessarily. It's going to be a lot of mixtures of different things that I've got going on. So feel free to leave a, a comment down below, questions, anything like that, ideas, stuff. I'm always looking to expand. Uh, hopefully we can keep on doing this. Uh, we're running out of room in the driveway right now, but I am hoping eventually to be opening up my own shop down south. I've got property down there. That's a very long and extensive project though that probably won't be happening anytime soon, but it's a goal in mind that I like to have. What? What? Do you want to go for a drive? What is he doing, Scout? Yeah, trust me, it's work on it. I do appreciate all your guys' support. It's been really fun. It's been really cool. I'm enjoying it. I'm hoping you guys are too. If you have any comments, leave them down below. I'll try and get back to them all as quickly as I can. So until next time, this has been Mechanical Mystery. Stay safe. Take care.